Yeah, Friday! You have reached episode 61 of the Ranting Weight Watcher. I am your host, Donato Russo. I hope you enjoy the show today. If this is your first time here and you enjoy the show, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. If the podcast app you're listening to me on allows you to rate the show, please leave a four-star or five-star rating, whatever is in your heart to leave. Any rating is greatly appreciated. Man, oh man, can you believe it? What do we got? Another week left of October? (laughs) Oh, man. Before you know it, we'll be saying Happy New Year, and we'll be on to 2022. (laughs) Oh, God. Let's get into this. Journey updates. Okay, guys. Another gain this week, so that's two in a row. 1.2 pound gain. And for the month of October, we are down 0.2. And total, since January 2019, we are down 139.4. Pounds remaining to get to the 150 milestone is 10.6 pounds. And the pounds remaining to get to the 175 milestone is 35.6 pounds. And the pounds remaining to get to the big goal which was to lose 200 pounds and decide on what to do in life from then on is 60.6 pounds. No, not a great week. And typically I wait to make changes until I have three gains in a row. But there's this one change that's been bugging me that I made back in Labor Day. Right around Labor Day, either the week before or the week after, somewhere around there. I made this change. You see, I'm an avid drinker of water. I usually drink half my body weight in ounces. So when I first started this journey and I got to half my body weight in ounces of water, I was much bigger than I am now. And as I lost weight, and I never really thought of it, I just kept going. It was routine. Routine to actually drink this much water. So I thought nothing of it. And then I had the great idea right around Labor Day to say, hey, I don't need this much water anymore. I lost a bunch of weight. Let me do the calculation again. I did the calculation, and the new calculation was probably just about 100 ounces less than I used to take in daily. Just about 100 ounces. So I said, okay, cut 100 ounces of water out of the diet, out of the daily intake, because we don't need it anymore. And since then, steadily, I've watched my right leg fluctuate in size. The right leg, if you guys don't know, is the leg I have lymphedema in. And numerous times throughout my life, it has swelled swelled to the point where I develop cellulitis and end up in the hospital and whatever have you. And I haven't dealt with that in so long. It kept sitting in the back of my head that you made this change And now you're seeing your leg act up again where you hadn't seen it act up for quite some time. It was bothering me that I made the change at that point. And I was in a workshop on Sunday and there was a woman there who drank a ton of water just like me and and made an adjustment just like me as she lost weight. And I asked her if she noticed that her body reacted negatively when she made the adjustment. And she told me it didn't because she was adjusting as she lost. She didn't wait until it was some big chunk of water like I did. And uh, she just did. She would lose five pounds, adjust. Lose 10 pounds, adjust. Whatever it was. 
So that made me solidify on Sunday. This is what needs to be done. We need to go back to what we used to drink and then slowly back off if we back off at all at this point. Because you know what? It didn't kill me to drink 200 to 240 ounces of water. It didn't kill me. I was eat, I was drinking. Everything was working fine. I mean, so many things work when you drink the right amount of water. And when you cut out as much as I did so instantly the way I did, it, it can't be good. Can't be good. So we're going back, and that that fluctuates. You know, I say to myself, if I hit 200, I'm okay. But if I, my aim is always for 240, 240 ounces a day. But if I hit 200, no big deal. I don't care. I don't, like, go crazy and say, hey, you didn't do it today. You know, like, oh, you didn't hit the goal. So that's the plan. I'm making the change early. We started on right after, basically right after that workshop on Saturday, we said, that's it. We're going back to the 240-ounce goal of water per day. And that's what we're doing. So on Sunday morning, I woke up like 4 o'clock in the morning with one word on my mind. That word was acceptance. This word was just stuck in my head. I didn't know why. I just woke up and it was just constantly acceptance, acceptance, acceptance. And I'm like, what does this mean? I'm saying to myself, what does this mean? Acceptance. What does it mean? What am I going to do with this? So I went and proceeded to go for my Sunday morning walk, as I do every Sunday. I was coming to the end of the walk. I was on the second half, starting the journey home. Suddenly, the word acceptance started to make sense. And so today's topic, acceptance, is basically how accepting certain situations can hinder our journey. And I thought back to 2005. Many of you know this story already, so bear with me a second. In 2005, I was one year post-op from gastric bypass surgery. And for the first time in my life, after going from 460 to 277, the scale slowed down drastically. Drastically. And I went through this whole time in this, in somewhere around this period of time, I was going through this mental thing, in my, thing going on in my head where I it felt, almost felt like a freak. And I was avoiding my friends. I was avoiding social situations. Because I felt like I couldn't be the old me and the new me wasn't here yet. And so I'm in this weird middle place where I don't know, I'm wondering what the hell did I do to myself? And I'm sure if we had a bunch of gastric bypass patients here, they probably might say the same thing. I don't know. See, in the short time that it takes to go from 460 to 277, there's no time to change the mindset in a year. Whatever you think you can get done, you get done, and and, and everything is just fast, fast, fast. Get it done, get it done, get it done. And really, I changed nothing in my mind. I changed zero behaviors. But I lost still almost 200 pounds in a year. And this was solely because I couldn't cram the same amount of food in my body that I used to be able to. 
that drastic change alone caused me to drop almost 200 pounds in a year. So I went through this whole weird, awkward social situation because as somebody who has gastric bypass, if you're hanging out with your friends like you used to, you go out to dinner, whatever it is, the one question every single one of us gets asked is, I'm sure, I, it's not just me, I'm not alone. That's all you can eat? Really? You're full? That's all you can eat? And there's only so many times you can hear that before you're ready to go out of your mind yourself and think you're some freak of nature because you can't finish a hamburger. So I stopped going. Said, oh, I'll catch up with you guys after. I got to do something first. Got to get some stuff done. But I'll meet up with you guys after dinner. And then I'd sit at home, eat something. Now, mind you, everything that I was eating... The types of foods never changed. I never changed the behavior. All I did was change the amount that I could eat. So, eventually, my desire to be with them, you're sitting there staring, and you used to be able to only eat a few fries and maybe a quarter of that chicken sandwich. But now you're a little bit more, you're enjoying the meal so much, maybe you're pushing it a little harder. Now all of a sudden you get half the chicken sandwich and a little few more fries than before. And before you know it, you're getting the whole chicken sandwich in and all of a sudden the questions start to shift. Is this how it's supposed to happen? Slowly but surely you get back to a normal meal? In reality, no. No, that, I'm sure that any doctor would say, no, that's not what's supposed to happen. But I wonder how many patients go through this. And as I kept eating poorly and making bad choices, the scale stopped moving. I told myself I was working hard. Oh, yeah, we're doing it. We're doing it. In reality, I didn't exercise at all. I didn't do anything. I just rode the wave of what it is to be post-op gastric bypass. I rode the wave, enjoyed life. All of a sudden, the scale stopped completely. And then I told the world that I was on a plateau. That's what it is. I'm on a plateau. Really, my journey was knocking on my door and saying, if you want to get to the next level, you either make better choices food-wise or start to exercise one of the two. You need to come to the next level. Now's the time. Make your choice. Instead, I started telling people I was plateauing. And then the scale started to creep upward. And a little bit more, and a little bit more. One pound here, two pounds there. Before you know it, I'm 40 pounds up. And the world notices. You don't get down to 277. You go from a size 60 waist to a size 42 waist. And then the world doesn't notice that you gained another 40 pounds. It doesn't, it doesn't happen like that. But I told everybody, no, 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 this is the lowest I've been. The number hasn't changed. I've been stuck at the same weight. I believe my own lies. All the lies I was telling everybody. I went through a whole time period where maybe this is all I'm going to lose. Maybe this is where I end up. That's just how low I get. And I believe these lies. I accepted my life up to that point. And then slowly but surely, because I never changed those behaviors, because I never made better choices over the next 15 years, I went from 277 back to 396 And that 
is when January 4th, 2019 comes and my comeback story begins. Because that morning on my birthday in 2019, I looked in the mirror, disgusted with the man I had become. In all kinds of joint pain, a crappy father, because I couldn't play with my daughter. Crappy husband, because I couldn't really help around the house. And I said to myself, if I don't make a change now, I'll be back to 460 in no time. And then what? And then what? Because, honest to God, 200, two, almost 200 pounds loss in a year. Do I honestly believe that was fat that I lost? No. Not, e- not one bit. I can't confirm it because you know what? Back in those days, I don't know if they had body composition scales. I don't know. But I'll bet my body fat percentage didn't change much in that year. I changed my, my food intake so drastically, I'll bet my, my body was in shock and started going after my muscle for the nutrients it needed. And that's how I lost weight so quickly. Because here I am, 43, almost 44 years old. I, I'm not as strong. I'm not nearly as strong as I used to be. And you would say, oh, you're, you're much older now. No, but that's not the case. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think the majority of the weight I lost, you know how the the myth goes? Muscle weighs more than fat. Because you can lose muscle. If you don't take the nutrients your body requires in any given situation, your body will eat away at the muscle in your body to get the nutrients it needs. So one way or another, it's going to get the nutrients it needs. And that's what I believe happened to me in that one year. We're going to take a break. So don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Hello, Donato. It's Jay Lynn, your Connect Mama. And I'm calling to acknowledge you for all the hard work that you do to forward not only your wellness, but your followers, people who see your videos. You are just a wealth of knowledge, and I really want to acknowledge you for taking it on in such a dynamic way. I've cried with you. Um, I've placed myself in your stories. I've laughed with you. You're hilarious. I've pondered from your posts and from your videos. I've researched from your videos. And most of all, I've acted on many of your notions, shall I call them. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I've been on this journey for, I don't know, 55 years without the confidence that I have this time is the last time. And the journey is so joyful, so thank you. Keep up the good work. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for listening to The Ranting Weight Watcher. If you would like to connect on social media, we would love to connect with you. 
On Facebook and Instagram, search for at the ranting Weight Watcher. On Twitter, search for at the ranting WW. On the Weight Watchers Connect app, search for at ranting Weight Watcher. You can also email the show, say hello or share your story with us. Send your emails to the ranting Weight Watcher at gmail.com. You can also call the show and leave a voicemail message that could be played on the air. Just call 505-652-7268. Again, that's 505-652-7268. We look forward to hearing from you. If this is your first time here and you enjoyed the show, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. We are proud to announce that the Ranting Weight Watcher is now rated number four in Feedspot.com's top 10 Weight Watchers podcasts. Click the link in the show's description if you wish to see the full list. If the podcast app you are listening with allows you to rate the show, please leave a four-star or five-star rating, whatever is in your heart to leave. Any rating is greatly appreciated. And now, without further delay, here is the star of the show, Donato Russo. And we are back. Thanks for sticking with me. I spent the first segment talking about how dangerous acceptance can be for someone's weight loss journey. And I wanted to give you an idea of a few ways life can cause acceptance to come and it hinder whatever we're trying to do. It doesn't have to just be weight loss. Could be anything, really. We're in the final quarter of the year. We have nothing but poor possible health choices in our future here. This is just one example. And there's so many of us So many of us would just say, well, it's the holidays. Nobody's concentrating on that stuff now. Enjoy yourself. And that groupthink mentality kicks in. Say, well, if they're doing it, they don't care. I don't care. And you start making poor choices. And you don't follow your weight loss plans the way you should. And before you know it, you're like everyone else who shows up to the gym on January 2nd with a weight loss goal and a dream and three months of your life wasted. In reality, wasted because of five days. Five days. Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, And New Year's. Wasted. Three months. Down the drain. Well, I enjoyed myself. I had a great time. It's only five days, Don. It's only five days. Is it really five days? You know, sometimes I wonder. Sometimes I wonder how soon people start buying Halloween candy. Is it the week of? Is it two weeks before? How soon? I wonder how many people buy Halloween candy and run out of it before Halloween and have to go buy more. I wonder. Because that's not just one day anymore. That's not just Halloween. If that happens, and I'm sure it happens, now we have how many weeks blown in the month of October? And it's not as if the candy disappears. On November 1st. 
I mean, that Halloween candy is in my house until we're replacing the candy bowls with the candy that has the Christmas colored wrapping on it. And sometimes way beyond that, it just sits in a Ziploc bag. Maybe Halloween candy doesn't last that long in your house. I don't know. But I know it lasts longer than October 31st, that's for sure. And how long you get it before then, I don't know. God only knows how much of the month goes just because of those decisions. And before you know it, it's time for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving comes, it's never just the day. Now you got leftovers for how many days? And those pies, the coconut custard, the pumpkin pie, the apple pie, if you bought them from a store, they don't, they don't go bad right away. They last a good while. How long are those things sitting in the fridge? Do they go bad before you finish them? So then we finally finish all the turkey. We finally finish all the stuffing and the sweet potatoes and the cranberry sauce and the pies. All of it's finally gone. Just in time to start baking Christmas cookies. And they stick around and like, oh, it's just a couple of Christmas cookies. Have some, have some. It's all right. It's the season. It's Christmas. Have some cookies. But it's not just cookies. There's events here. Christmas party there. Christmas party here. Go and see this relative. Go and see that relative. It's never just the one thing. If you're like me and you went down to cut your own Christmas tree, that turns into not only just cutting the Christmas tree, having a cup of hot cider, having a cup of cocoa, buying those homemade donuts. You know those ones, those old-fashioned ones with the brown sugar or or cinnamon on the outside? And then before you know it, it's Christmas Eve. And, uh, you know, I don't know about you, but we have a big feast on Christmas Eve. Big feast on Christmas Day. And those Christmas cookies don't disappear day after Christmas. They last straight until New Year's. And then you got a big feast on uh, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, whatever. Whatever alcohol consumption comes with that. So really I can say three months out of the year is gone because of a, an acceptance of this is just how it goes at the holidays. But is that it? So you're telling me, okay, nine months out of the year, you're good. You're perfect nine months out of the year and then the, these three months are the only three months you slack off. Is that what I can say? What about when someone says something like this? Oh my God, I just can't deal. I have so much stress in my life. So much stress. I just can't deal with uh, dealing with tracking and weighing and measuring and making healthy choices. I just can't deal with that right now. Things are too stressful in my life. How many times throughout a year can you say that? How many times? Why is it that you can't make good choices during these times, but it's easy to make the bad ones? Why is it that it's too hard to track, weigh, and measure during these times, but it's so easy to pile on food that's no good for you? Is that fixing Your stressful situation? No, it's just creating new stressful situations. Because eventually, the stressful situation that you're making all the bad choices of is going to be over. And all you're going to be left with is the bad choices you made during that stressful situation. And then what? Oh, I can't believe I did that. I blew everything. And you start coming down on yourself. How much time out of the year can I take for that? So we're up to three months so far for the holidays. How much extra can I take out for that? 
Can I take another month? Can I argue for six weeks or two months? I'm sure I could. I'm sure there are certain people that have many stressful things between work and family life and everything else. I can argue for two months here. And I could say easily, you wasted five months of the year between holidays and stressful situations. Okay, it's January. Everybody goes back to work. They go to the gym. They got their New Year's resolution in their dream and they get, get, get back to work. And their motivation takes them to maybe February and the strong ones, March. And then they fizzle out. And before you know it, it's April. And there's a warm snap. And everybody's like, "Uh uh-oh, I better get in shape because uh, it's time for a a beach body. I better get to, I better get working here. And so you hit the gym hard. You lose some weight. And you, you feel okay. Maybe you weren't, you aren't where you want to be in that bathing suit, but you feel good. You feel better than you would have otherwise. And you busted your butt and the summer begins and you're hanging out the beach and now it's time to have a good time. And now it's time to make poor choices at the beach. The hot dog stand, the little hamburger joint just, just next to the beach. the poor snack food you bring with you, the beer, the, the, the other alcoholic beverages. How many poor choices are we making during summer? Well, it's summer. We're having a good time. We're enjoying life. So can I take two months? Can I take another two months for the summer? While you drink your martinis and your, and your beer and everything else at the beach and you're making poor choices food-wise, can I take another two months? So three months for holidays, two months for stressful life, and two months for summer, having a good time during summer. We're at seven months now. Over half the year, wasted. And we have the balls to say, I don't know what happened this year. We would have the balls to say, I don't know where I went wrong. And yet we repeat the same process the next year around. Drop some weight before the holidays. The holidays come, go crazy. The holidays are over, drop some more weight. Some of you fizzle out, some of you stick to it. Now it's time for the summer. Drop some more weight so you can feel good in a bathing suit. Just so you can goof around, make poor choices, drink like crazy, and have a good time. To have all the weight come back in time for the fall season. And let's drop some more weight for the holidays again. And start the same cycle. All over again. I wonder how many of you would think like this. Would look at the entire picture of a weight loss journey. Because these little decisions, it's all part of it. All part of it. And maybe you're out there, and maybe none of this affects you. Maybe you're sitting in the gym, and you... Your journey is telling you it's time to take it to the next level. And you're sitting there staring at what you need to do next. And you're saying, I'm not strong enough to do that. I can't do that. No, there's just no way. There's just no way I can do that. You've accepted the lie already. You haven't even attempted it. You're just so intimidated by what the next level is. You just can't do it. You're just not strong enough. There's no way. And then maybe some of other yous like that, like me, when I came in that moment, 
and I'm staring at the scale at 277. Well, maybe, maybe I'm just not meant to be any lower than 277. Maybe I'm just not meant to be there in 2005. A fool. I was a fool. Staring at the scale. Oh, instead of thinking it was me and I should just get to work and start doing what I was supposed to do with my life. I sat there and said, Oh well, maybe two thousand two seventy seven isn't so bad. I'm 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 much happier now than I was. But did I stay at two seventy seven? No, because I never changed any of my behaviors. I wasted fifteen years of my life going back in the wrong direction before I said enough is enough. It can't be like this. Can't keep going like this over and over and over again. We can't just accept life for what it is and allow it to dictate the terms of the situation. We're going to take a break. Don't go anywhere. Hello, I'm Donato Russo, and I am the Ranting Weight Watcher. I wrote an affirmation. It's called the Ranter's Creed. I dedicate that affirmation to all of you who are watching. Nothing can stand in your way because you are an unstoppable force. Your challenges crumble in your presence because you are so strong. Your insecurities no longer have power over your life because you are so confident. Your mistakes are your choices and you are okay with this because you are so intelligent. The mirror and the scale no longer haunt you because you are so beautiful. You can face any circumstance with unwavering support because you are so loved. The demons of your past can no longer torment you because you love yourself. All things are possible as long as you believe because God is on your side. You will achieve all of your goals, not if, but when, because you have no boundaries. You are the champion of your story because you do whatever it takes to win. No one can take what you've done away from you because you are the author and the hero of your story. Arise, champion. The victory is yours. Because you are enough. sitting here and I'm thinking about 
am I getting through to any of you? How many people hear me and I'm just wasting my breath? And how many people hear me and actually understand what I'm saying? They actually understand the concept of staring at their life or their journey, whatever it have you, from a 40,000 foot view. Because it's not just that small decision in that moment. It's not just that moment that says, oh, I can't, I can't, I'm just too stressed out right now. Life is just too hard. I can't possibly think about tracking right now. I can't possibly think about making good choices right now. I can't possibly worry about stepping on the scale every week. Meanwhile, you could possibly do the exact opposite of that and be perfectly okay with it in a stressful situation. You could do everything the opposite of what I just said and be perfectly okay with it. Make poor choices, measure and measure and weigh nothing. And be okay with it. That will be okay. That'll get me through this stressful situation. If I make poor choices food-wise, that'll make the stressful situation go away. You don't understand, Don. You don't understand what I'm going through. Here's what I understand. I understand if you have the conscious mind to make poor choices, that means you also have the conscious mind to make good choices. If you have the conscious mind to say, I don't want to track, you also have the conscious mind to say, I do want to track. And the way you can save meals and everything else like that, there's really no excuse this day and age. I mean, for God's sakes, it's one of the pillars. One of the pillars. If the entire structure was sitting on four pillars and you just said, no, I'm not tracking, you just took out one of the pillars, how long is the structure going to stand? If an entire building is standing on top of four pillars and you come in and say, nah, this one's not needed, and take out one corner. How long? How long will it say? 25% of the uh, program gone. Just because you said, nah, it's not required. Just gone. How many? I would easily argue for stressful situations two months. Easily. We just waste time. We waste time. And we wonder why things don't go the way we want them to go. Let's say... Me trying to give you help you understand here what I'm trying to make you see. You buy a cup of coffee every day. In this day and age, was an extra large cup of coffee. I think I'm sure it's I'm sure it's more expensive now. That's how long it's been really since I bought one. I'm sure it's more now. But you buy one Monday through Friday and you take it with you to work. And you do it every week of the year. Two seventy-five a day, times five days, times fifty-two weeks. 
And you're like, ah, it's no big deal. It's a cup of coffee, Don. It's $2. Forget about it. At the end of the year, you're on the better half of $1,000 on a cup of coffee. On the better half of $1,000. Because what you're doing in the moment seems insignificant. But if you take a 40,000 foot view of that insignificant choice, suddenly, listen, if your job came to you tomorrow and say, we want to give you a thousand dollar a year raise, would you say no? No, I don't need it. How many would say that? Meanwhile, you're perfectly okay with blowing $1,000 so you can have the convenience of a cup of coffee on your way to work. That's what I'm talking about. Small, insignificant decisions that when you compile them, They just seem like a really, really bad year. Three months of bad decisions in during the holidays. Another two months for stressful situations. And another one or two months of summer fun. Over half the year, gone. Gone, and what do we have to show for it? The need to continue. That's what we have to show for it. The need to continue as if we made no progress whatsoever. And for the people sitting in the gym who've already decided they're not strong enough to move forward. (laughs) It's just... The whole, if you ever watch these, who you guys would say are crazy, these bodybuilders, they're all about breaking barriers. What does breaking barriers mean? They push through to the other side. When they don't start counting their reps until it hurts. Then when every part of their body is hurting, they start counting one. Two, three. And they only got three that time. But the next time, they're pushing for four. The next time after that, they're pushing for five. They're going until they collapse. Until their body just can't do it anymore. Because they know the barriers are mental. They're not physical. And when you break down a mental barrier, all of a sudden, the, you find that the physical's there. Ready to go. But you've decided to allow your brain to tell you you can't do something. How will you get to the goals that you say you have if you're allowing your brain now to tell you you're not good enough yet to push through, to get to the next level? And if you're in that dangerous place of stepping on the scale and thinking, maybe I'm not meant to go any further than this, Maybe I'm not meant to, this is where it is for me. I could be happy here. That's a dangerous place. I have been there. I know what it feels like. And all it did was turn me around and send me back in the other direction. Don't allow 
the acceptance of the current situation to dictate your future. You control your future. No one else controls it for you. Your inner thoughts tell them to shut up and you keep pushing. You keep pushing until the scale says what you need to say. And I don't care how many weeks it takes. And I don't care how frustrated you get. Because not doing it is not going to give you what you want either. I know. I was there. I stood on there when I was 277. I stood on that scale. And I said, maybe it's not going any lower than this. Hear me. Listen to where I've been. I spent the next 15 years gaining everything back. Because that moment went the wrong way. That was the last snowflake that caused the avalanche. Hear me. Listen to my words. I hope you do. I hope that this episode is not just a waste of my breath and having a bunch of, a bunch of people think I'm a lunatic for being so crazy about things that seem so insignificant. I wonder is there anyone out there who has done or is currently doing any of the things I spoke about today? Have you stepped on the scale and had the thought, hey, maybe this is as good as it gets for me? All the while knowing that there are at least three things that you can become more consistent doing? Have you told the world that you're plateauing only to go home, stare in the mirror at yourself and knowing the hard truth? Do you tell yourself you're working hard knowing you haven't had anywhere close to the amount of dedication you used to have toward this journey in months? You're not alone. But the wonderful thing is, you can still come back. You can get in touch with the reason why you started this journey in the first place. It's still here. Your why is still here, waiting for you to come back and reconnect. So, will you do it? Will you hit reset today and come back and do it the right way this time? And maybe approach things in a way that you never thought you would ever do in your life. Taking risks, knowing they may or may not pay off because you know it doesn't matter. You aren't going anywhere. You're doing this for the rest of your life. And what is a risk here and there if it goes in the wrong direction? In the broad scheme of things, what is a small failure? When you look at it from a 40,000 foot view, It's nothing. Come back. Recommit to yourself. No one is more capable than you. I love each and every one of you. God bless you all.